Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to find the area between two functions. Determine the area of the region enclosed by the functions f and g. We get our function f that looks like this and our function g that looks like this. And if we draw these two functions f and g, we can see this area here between these two curves. And we want to find the size of this red area. And we can already see that the area goes from here to here, so from one intersection point of the functions to the next intersection point of the functions. So these intersection points are going to be important and they are also the first step of our three steps we have to take here to find the area between two curves. Step number one, find the intersection points. Okay, so we have our function f and g, and to find the intersection points, we just have to set these functions equal to each other. So we take our first function, x squared plus 1, and set it equal to our second function that looks like negative x squared plus 9. And now we solve this equation for x. We have x squared in here, a number, here's negative x squared and another number. So I would suggest to bring this x squared part to the other side as well. So we add x squared on both sides of the equation so that we get x squared plus another x squared equals 2x squared. Then we have the plus 1 here. On the other side, these two cancel out and we only have our 9. To solve for x, we want to get rid of the plus 1 here, so we subtract the 1 on both sides of the equation so that we have only 2x squared left on this side because this cancels out. And on the other side, 9 minus 1 equals 8. This is our equation so far. We still want to solve for x. So maybe let's get rid of the 2 here by dividing both sides of the equation by 2 so that this cancels out and only x squared is left. And on the other side, 8 over 2 equals 4. Now we want to get rid of this squared here. We can do that by taking the square root on both sides of the equation. If we do that, we always have to remember that we get two solutions now. So for my x, I will get a positive solution and a negative one, and the square root of 4 equals 2. So I have a first solution, I call it x1, which is positive 2, and a second solution, I call it x2, which is my negative 2. These are my intersection points well, the x values of these intersection points, but this was step one, and we can go to step two. This beautiful expression here, don't worry, we will go through it together step by step, but so far we have our function f and our function g. We have our x values from our intersection points, and now we use this formula, the integral from a to b, these are our limits and these are going to be our x values here, we've already found. And then it says f of x minus g of x and we close our integral by dx. Now, there are two versions of this formula. One that looks exactly like this and maybe you are using this version of the formula, but the second version uses these absolute value bars around our integral. This version is the safest one that you can use because the absolute value makes sure that your integral, your result at the end is going to be positive. And since we want to find an area, we need a positive result. If you don't want to use the absolute value, then you have to make sure that your function f, so the function you insert in here, is going to be the upper function and your function g is below your function f. 
So if you can take care of that, that your function is your function here is the upper function, then you can use this formula like this. If you don't know how your functions look like and don't want to think about any of that, just take the absolute value around your integral and you don't have to think about any of that. You can use your function f and write it in here or you could switch it and take this function and write it in here and the other one then in here. So if you don't want to think about too much, then just take the absolute value bars. Although you also forget, forget them a lot, so I don't know which one is easier. Just pick one. Okay, how does our integral look like then? Our limits, a and b, are our intersection points the x values that we found. We take the smaller number first, it's the negative 2, and write it down here. And the bigger number comes on top here, so it is the 2. Then f of x, you can pick either this one or this one, what you like best. We take f of x because otherwise it's maybe too confusing, but you can uh, change it if you want to. So x squared plus 1 is my f of x. Then I have the minus here. And for my g of x, I take this function here, but I write it in parentheses because I have this minus here. So make sure to write it in parentheses and take your g function in here. And we close everything by the dx. And then we use the absolute value bars to make sure that this result is going to be positive. And now this was step two to write down this expression. Step three, of course, solve the integral. What else? We write down these absolute value bars so that we don't forget it. And um, maybe we first simplify everything that is inside our integral. So we have the integral from negative 2 to 2. And here we want to get rid of the these parentheses here. So we have our x squared plus 1. And then we have to switch all the signs in here. So negative and negative gets positive x squared. And negative and positive stays negative with our 9. And then the dx at the end. Okay, my absolute value bar is, I can take it a little closer. Next step, our bars again. Um, let's simplify a bit more. We still have the integral from negative 2 to 2. Now we have x squared plus another x squared, which equals 2x squared. And from the numbers, 1 minus 9 equals negative 8 and my dx at the end. Okay, we simplified everything so far in our integral so that it is time for the antiderivative now. We write down our absolute value bars first. To find the antiderivative, we start here with this first part. We have 2x squared. The rule is to increase our exponent by 1. So instead of x to the power of 2, we write x to the power of 3. Then we write a fraction in front that consists of this new exponent here in the denominator. And for the numerator, we take the number that was in front here before, so the 2 in here. Then we have our minus, the same rule here, although here is no x in here. Then the rule is if you only have a number, you take your number and you add an x. We had our limits from negative 2 to 2, and now we insert our limits. We always start with the upper limit. We insert it for every x we can find in here so that we get our absolute value bars. Don't forget them. Then we have 2 over 3. Instead of the x, we insert our 2, raise it to the power of 3, and subtract 8 times. And instead of the x, we write a 2. This was the upper limit. Now the same thing with this limit here. 
we connect it always with a minus, always a minus, and then write the rest in parentheses because we want to subtract all of this now. And now we insert the negative 2 for every x we have in here. So we have 2 over 3 multiplied by negative 2 this time and raise it to the power of 3. We subtract 8 times and instead of the x we insert the negative 2. Now put all of this in a calculator without the absolute value bars, of course, so only the numbers, we get a result of negative 64 over 3. We want to find the area, right? A negative result would not be a good thing, but fortunately we have our absolute value bars, so they tell us even if this number in here is negative, we take care of it and we make everything positive. So our final result without the absolute value bars is the positive 64 over 3. And this is the size of the area. We solved our integral, the third step, and we solved this problem. We found our area and um, yeah, found the area between these two curves. I hope you know now how it works. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.